So I achieved my lifelong dream of getting into medical school. This video will tell you exactly how I did it and how you can do the same. Let me start with some context. Medical school in Canada is like Alcatraz, the prison. You're put into this label of being a pre-med and it's almost impossible to break out. However, there are a select few who get lucky and can escape this label and get into medical school. You don't believe me? It's actually easier to get into Harvard than it is to get into an average medical school here in Canada. We're talking about Harvard here, the best school in the world. Come on now. So here I was, a five-year-old child who wanted to become a doctor but had absolutely no idea how hard it was going to be and the obstacles that he'd be facing. But why become a doctor out of everything else? This is how it started. So a few days after my fourth birthday, my arm started hurting like never before. A few days later, I spiked the fever and that persisted for about a week. I went to four different doctors and they gave me four different diagnoses. It wasn't till the fifth doctor who actually told me that I had osteomyelitis. So what is osteomyelitis? Osteomyelitis is the swelling or inflammation of bone tissue, usually the result of an infection. This experience was really bad, but I somehow got two positive things out of it. One, I got exposed to the field that I would end up dedicating my whole life to. And second, I got this pretty radical sling that I could show off to my friends at school because they thought I'd been through a war or something, and they were pretty amazed. This experience changed the course of my life, and it showed me the direction I needed to take. What I didn't know is how many obstacles I'd be facing in the future. Throughout my schooling, I always told my friends and teachers that I wanted to become a doctor. I would never hesitate, and I was as confident as one could ever be. But then came high school. As it is with everyone in high school, there are many ups and there are many downs. There was a period of time where my marks weren't as high as I wanted them to be. My extracurriculars were failing and there was so much more happening that was out of my control. Basically, I took a bunch of consecutive L's. And this was the first time I ever experienced some sort of self-doubt about my career decisions. As I said earlier, medical school is one of the hardest places to get into and it is a big risk to start applying to it, even though many people don't acknowledge this. I wanted to make sure that I was making the right decision. This was the very first obstacle I had to overcome. But how do I do it? It's a lot easier said than done. And I tried to come up with a plan. So since I was failing everything anyways, I told myself I could just continue on failing and trying everything else. And somehow I'll find my way. What? So even though it doesn't sound like a plan, that is the plan I took, and I just tried everything else. I worked on a startup with my friends, I took part in many business competitions, and I even played rugby. I loved all of it. From 3D printing a vital part of our product one hour before our production meeting, to jumping into the sky to catch a rugby ball. But is this what I wanted to do for the rest of my life? I didn't know. This is also around the time that I was volunteering in the rehab department of my local hospital. My only duties were to switch the gowns and gloves in the department, and this took a grand total of 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Even though for the most part I was just sitting there doing nothing, every time I entered the hospital, I felt a sense of fulfillment and a sense of responsibility. I wanted to treat patients, I wanted to make them feel better and get them out of the hospital as fast as possible. It took a lot of introspection, but this is what made me realize that the medical path is the path for me. I decided from that point on that even if I didn't get into medical school, I gave it my best shot, and this would prevent me from having regrets in the future. Now this is when the real journey starts. I was now at the University of Toronto, one of the premier institutions in the whole world. I was here to take over. That's what I told myself. I needed to make sure I took part in everything and give my 100% to every single thing I did. This is also around the time that I started Blankets for TO, a nonprofit that helps homeless people here in Toronto with Naman and Rusham. This was our dream, and we wanted to impact thousands of people with our work. It actually started off well. We found team members who shared our vision, and the organization started growing pretty quickly. School was great too. I had high grades and I was actually enjoying the subjects that were being taught at school. So this was around January 2020. What could go wrong? All the plans I had for taking over in university and doing my best were now thrown out the window. 
and the uncertainty surrounding the pandemic just made things much worse. See, in this scenario, there was nothing anyone could do. All we could do is wait and pray that everything comes back to normal. So what did I do? I used this extra time to my advantage and started planning and executing virtual events for both Blankets for TO and many other projects I was partaking in. Don't get me wrong, not all of them worked. We had many fails. But this time, what was different is I told myself that no matter how many failures I had, I was not stopping. Contrary to popular opinion, school was actually much harder during COVID. You're kidding, right? The exams were almost twice as hard and you had to find motivation to study even though you were at home all day and had absolutely nothing to do. There were good days and there were bad days. Life often felt cyclical. From the bed to the desk, back to the bed, there was nothing really to do, but the biggest test of my life was coming up. The MCAT. I had heard many horror stories about this exam. An eight hour test with three months of studying? How was I even going to do this? So I took the MCAT after my second year of university. I studied for around three months and took my test on August 7th. I used Kaplan books and there are many videos on this channel to tell you exactly how to score well on the MCAT, so please be sure to check those out. So now the three months were over and you have to wait one month to get your results back. I thought the test ended up going well, but when I got my results back, I was not happy. I thought the score was too low and I wouldn't get any interviews and I now I had to do this test all over again the following year. Even though I thought my test score was pretty low, I applied anyways because why not? And I ended up taking the Casper test, which tests how ethical you are. Luckily, I ended up doing well on that too, but now I had to wait for two months to see if I got any interviews. To be completely honest, I wasn't expecting anything. I'd accepted that I'd have to retake the MCAT and apply next year and go through this process all over again. I had a little bit of hope, but I find that I'm too optimistic sometimes. As January got closer, my heart started racing. I was checking pre-med forums every single day, checking if the interviews came out, and it was not a good time. But then on January 14th, 2022, I received my first interview invite. I was ecstatic. I felt like I'd pulled off the biggest heist in medical school history. Although there was some doubt in my mind that I'd be getting an email right after telling me that they'd made a mistake and it just felt like some sort of fluke. This was up till January 19th when I got my second interview invite and now this didn't feel like a fluke but it wasn't even close to sinking in. When it was all said and done, I'd received three interviews from top schools in Canada and I didn't take these next few months lightly and I surrounded my life with interview prep. I had prepared for three hours every single day for two months leading up to my interview and along the way I'd had some good friends and mentors who supported me throughout all of this. Ultimately without them I could not have done well in these interviews and I felt that the interviews went pretty well. Could you guess what I have to do next? The medical school process is just a big waiting game. My last interview was around the end of March and now I had to wait till the second Tuesday of May. I don't know why they do this, but it's always the second Tuesday of May that you have to wait until, which in my case was May 10th. Um, and that's all I did, just to wait, wait, and wait. However, this time one thing was different. Since I'd gone the three interviews, I had expectations. And expectations are really, really bad when you have to wait for something because you think of all the things that could go wrong and all those little mistakes you made in those interviews and you're just stressing over and over again because you don't wanna go over this process the following year. So I came up with a plan of how to combat the stress I'd feel on May 10th. I decided that I'd sleep early on May 9th so I wouldn't check the results until I woke up the following morning when all the emails were already in. However, I made one very big mistake. I checked these pre-med forms at 12 a.m. and I saw that all of the schools I'd applied to had results come out already at 12. And I really wanted to go to sleep because I didn't want to open these results before I could show my parents. So this was quite the dilemma. What do I do? Do I check now and then tell my parents in the morning? Or do I go to sleep and then check in the morning like I said I was going to do? What I decided was I was going to try to fall asleep. This wasn't very successful, but I did fall asleep around 3 a.m. Then 
I woke up back at 5 a.m. and texted my dad if he was awake. He was. So this was the time to check. I opened up the page and scrolled down. That was the longest scroll of my entire life. What did I see? I saw an offer beside the school I really wanted. And this was the University of Toronto. I saw that I'd gotten a medical school offer from the best medical school in Canada, one of the top institutions in the whole world. And this was the biggest thing that has ever happened in my life. The way I told my dad that I'd actually gotten in is a very funny story in and of itself. There was this movie I used to watch when I was younger called Munnabai MBBS. In that, there's this person who becomes a doctor after being an underworld doc. And I just love that movie because it was a different perspective on medicine than what I'd seen before. So what I did is I'd clipped out a part of a song from that movie a week before the results came out. And I kept this prepared for the day that I got in because I really believe in manifestation and things that actually saying things that you want to achieve. So once I checked my results and saw that I got in, I sent this clip to my dad around 5, 10, 5, 12 in the morning. And then he came into my room because I told him I was going to check. So he asked me what happened. And I said, check your phone. And then he opened up that clip and he was the happiest person in the entire world. My mom started screaming. My grandparents were here and they were so happy. I could, they were even happier than I was. And that's all I could ask for. It was the happiest day of my life. And now that I've made it, it gave me some time to reflect. And that's why it took so long to make this video. I came across some points that I'd like to share with you guys because I feel like it might help you in your own journey. So the number one thing I'd like to talk about is that you have to look at obstacles like a good thing. It's not necessarily bad that you're going to have to struggle because when you get to medical school and when you achieve your goals, you look back at those times and cherish those memories when you were struggling, when you were stressed, and that's what really makes it so worth it. I feel like if I'd gotten into medical school in a really easy manner, I wouldn't appreciate it as much as I do now. The second thing I'd like to tell you guys is plan in advance. Don't be the person that's in third year looking back at the things they could have done. Try to be that person in first year who has a plan for every single year of university and tries to execute the plan to their best of their ability. There will be problems, there will be obstacles, and you're going to have to get over them, and your plans will not always be how you wanted them. However, if you have a plan, at least there's some sort of pathway that you can follow rather than just going in every direction you can think of. And to close off, I'd just like to say that I'm very grateful to be in the position I'm in here today. I'm not going to say that it's just hard work that gets you here. There is a lot of luck involved. But as long as you work your hardest and put in your 120% into this process, at least you know you try. That way you don't have any regrets. And even if you don't get to the place you want to get to, you'll get to a place that's even better. That brings us to the end of this video. And I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got to learn something. And I can answer any questions you have in the comments below. Don't forget to like our videos. Don't forget to subscribe. And you can also join the newsletter. I'll leave a link below.